Hello, my name is Tony and I'm a third year PhD student with the Electrochemical and Microengineering Group here at the department. And today we'll tell you about my research on biophotovoltaics and how we can actually harness photosynthesis for electricity generation. This photo is of the world's largest floating solar PV power plant. It sits on top of an artificial lake situated above an abandoned coal mine in China. Abandoning coal and more generally fossil fuels is a practice that we need to accelerate. And this is the fundamental motivation for my research. The solar PV panels floating above the lake are one of the ways we've been doing this since the 50s. They allow us to convert sunlight into electricity and will remain a critical weapon in our fight to decarbonize electricity supply. When we look closer at the image, we see these islands of green interspersed across the lake. And we realize that photosynthetic organisms such as plants and algae and cyanobacteria have effectively been doing what solar panels do for over 3 billion years. They use energy from photons in sunlight to generate energized electrons for photosynthesis. The good news is that we can actually co-opt the natural ability of photosynthetic organisms to convert sunlight into chemical energy and to donate electrons outside of the organism to generate electricity for our own needs. A wide range of organisms conduct photosynthesis for their energy needs, ranging from sand bacteria at the micrometer scale, all the way to plants and trees that can be up to 100 meters tall. In my research, I focus on cyanobacteria because they're simple organisms with one strand of DNA, making it relatively easier to study them. When the bacteria are illuminated, they strip electrons from water and then combine these energized electrons with CO2 they absorb from the atmosphere to produce sugars. And in the dark, the reverse happens. The sugars are broken down back into CO2 and in the process generating electrons. Some cyanobacteria species actually send out some of the electrons generated during photosynthesis and respiration outside of the cell. There are a few ideas of why they do this. One, it may be a way for them to obtain important metals such as iron, from their surroundings, or two, it might be a way for communicating with other cells using a chemical language called quorum sensing. Irrespective of why they do it, we can capture some of these electrons in electrochemical devices called biophotovoltaics or BPVs. The BPV is an electrochemical cell which is divided into two sections. The first section is the anode, this is where we host the bacteria and where we shamelessly hijack some of the electrons that they produce. And the second half is the cathode, which is open to air, and this is where the electrons, which are captured in the anode after traveling through a conductive wire, are recombined with oxygen to produce water as your only byproduct. On the right, we have an image of uh, an example device or an experimental device that I use in my own research. And around the box here, the red box at the bottom, this is where a lot of the electrochemical reactions shown on the left are occurring. The efficiency of BPVs are currently quite low, they're typically less than 1%, and the power output is three orders of magnitude lower than traditional BPVs. And one major bottleneck is the rate of electron transport from within the photosynthetic organisms to the anode. This is quite poorly understood. We have a few hypotheses on how this occurs. One, it might be an indirect transfer using uh, shuttles which travel from within the cyanobacteria to the anode, deposit electrons and then travel back to the cyanobacteria. It could be a direct electron transfer using nanowires which extend from the cyanobacteria outer cell membrane. Or it could be a direct transfer again from directly from the cell outer membrane onto the, onto the anode. It could also be a mix of all four processes. However, what we do know is that when we control the growth environment of the bacteria, we see an enhancement of the rate of electron transport from the bacteria to the anode. My research tries to understand what changes are occurring in the bacteria under different environmental conditions, for example, an environment which is deprived of a key nutrient such as iron, or an environment which has um, high levels of CO2, much higher than the natural atmosphere, and how these changes affect the performance of BPB devices. To do this, I combine techniques from traditional engineering and electrochemistry, uh, confocal microscopy and fluorescent studies, and other techniques from biology, as well as more recent techniques from machine learning um, to help me speed up experiments and analyze my data.
Um, and uh, with that, I will, I will stop there and uh, hope to uh, hear more from, from you in the, in the panel discussion. Thank you.